the sign of the seek inverse secant of u. What we're going to do here is we're going to start off, start off with the inside. I'm going to rewrite this as secant of theta is equal to u. And I can actually, as long as I remember my bounds are between 0 and pi, because it's the inverse, I just rewrote it here. So I can reciprocate this and make it um, equal to u or cosine of theta is equal to 1 over u. And just for argument's sake, I'm going to draw a triangle here. This could be u, or excuse me, um, this could be 1, uh, 1 right here. This can be u. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, my y component here. My y component is simply going to be um, y squared is equal to u squared minus 1, or y is equal to the square root of u squared minus 1. And then what happens next is I uh, now I can rewrite everything. It's simply the sine of this. So u squared minus 1. There's a little bit of a catch here, though. Um, the solution en ends up being equal to uh, square root of u squared minus 1. But it's over the absolute value of u. And the reason for this is because up here, inside we have the inverse secant of negative 1. Uh, this is limited between 0 and pi here. It's going to be anywhere within here. And if you notice the sign, sign's positive in quadrant 1 and 2. And down over here, u squared is always going to be greater because it's the uh, hypotenuse. It's always going to be equal to 0, or it's always going to be this, this solution in here is either going to be 0 or it's always going to be a positive value. And as a result, to keep the sign positive, we need to have an absolute value on u. So that's why you have an absolute value sign down here. And this is a solution right here.